Okay, welcome to Byfield, Massachusetts. It's the season opener as the Triton Vikings are going to host Maskinomen. I'm Patrick Heffernan. Uh, along with Steve Barrett, you know. Fantastic. Very happy to have you here, Steve. First game of the season, a uh, home game, which is great for this Triton Vikings team. A uh, little bit of a young team this year, so we're going to have to see what they can come out and do against a team that has uh, traditionally been a tough opponent here in the Cal. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, um, Masco's always well coached. Uh, they have some good athletes, but uh, we've got some good young talent. I think this will be a uh, nice measure stick for them, and I think some good competition to get them ready for the season. Sure. Yeah, it's good, and it's good. It's a Friday night. They've had about a week and a half of practice, so it's sort of, uh, you know, it's one of those things. They, they're going to get a game tonight. They're going to get a day off, and then they get Sunday practice. And you know how that Sunday practice is after that first game. <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, That's when they come back and realize that the, the game happens at a much faster speed than they were used to. So. Let's get ready to go here. Again, opening tip, 2019-2020 season, and I'm, I'm just psyched that it's a home game to start this thing off. It's just fantastic. Yeah, I think that really helps all the girls down. So Masco starts off. Maeve Heffernan with an attempt at a steal. Good drive. Great block there by Avery Kerr. Ball kicks out. Triton in a man-to-man -man set right now. Ball goes out to the wing for Masco. Number five is going to try and drive. And there's going to be a foul on the inside. A charge, quick foul by Masco on the offensive end. And they're putting pressure on right away. So right away, Triton's got to figure out what they can do against the, the looks like a man-man press. And uh, Masco with a steal inside. Good pressure. Kick that ball back to the outside for Masco. Masco swings it around. That girl can shoot. And she does. Comes out. Can't quite grab the rebound. Inside. Big, big mess. And it's going to be a double dribble. Thank you so much. Some good positioning there. I think we did a nice job watching out there, which gives a chance to get that rebound. And something down a little bit. Paige Walpone can't quite come up with it. And right away, Masco is going to get the first basket of the game off of the second turnover because of the press. Maeve Hefferman throws it away. She's going to have to play some defense. Number three tries to do a Euro step and stumbles instead. And that's the third or fourth turnover already in this game. Probably the fourth or fifth turnover yeah, already. Yeah, I think so. Triton's got to settle down here a little bit. The girls got to come to the ball. Just relax. They'll get in a groove. They'll break sooner or later. There we go. There's Paige Volpone looking good, bringing the ball up now. So Triton over half court. She's going to drive right down the lane. Good, strong move. Definitely fouled, and she's going to go to the line. Great move by the senior, and welcome back to her. Good to see her out there. Absolutely, and I think that was uh, a job well done. I think she saw the opening there. I think you have to be aggressive. You can't be passive against Masco. They're going to be aggressive on defense. If you see an opportunity to take, you got to take it. Absolutely. And good to see her get down the court with the ball, too. Not, not hang around, not wait for uh, somebody to pass to, but just get aggressive with it. So first Triton shot now at the line. Wins out a little bit short. I think it's the first game, we're going to see a lot of turnovers. We're going to see a lot of missed shots, I think, because it's just that first game of the season, just trying to warm up into it, you know? Absolutely. You know, we've got, and again, we, we've got a young team, so we've got a uh, mixture. We've got some seniors with juniors and sophomores, so I think they've got to get a, a rhythm themselves and, and learn how to play as a team as a unit. So quick pressure uh, in the backcourt by Triton. Masco able to break it, swing it out to the wing. Long two-pointer. It's not going to go. Paige Volpone can't climb up the rebound. Molly Kimball inside, but she can't stop the shot. And Masco goes up 4-1. to one. Triton looking to break the press again. Can't quite get to it. That's a, that's a good little box out there. Yeah, um, Paige, Paige, Paige will be physical. <laughs> yes, she no will. Doubt. Yes, she will. Triton with pressure again. But looking like they're dropping back. It's hard to tell whether they're, they're trying to go with a real full core pressure or just try to hurry up the Basco team, make them, uh, give them less time on the quarter set. Nope. There's a foul that she drives. Yeah, that's number five. That's Paige Richardson. She's probably one of the better athletes um, at Masco, and she's got a you saw a good first step. She a little bit of a head fake and drove right to the basket. She'll do that a lot, and then once you start to lay off her a little bit, she'll start hitting an outside shot. So because it's the first game of the season, I'm also not in shape and completely forgot to figure out who their starting lineup was. <laughs> Go over some of the names before it. But you're right, that is Paige Richardson now at the line. She probably has a couple of their baskets already. And there's the starters for uh, for Masco. Thanks to Eric Gundam, who's here with us. So Maeve to Molly. Molly's going to drive. Tries to get a pick. Doesn't quite get it. Swings it out. Another steal. Paige Richardson again. Going to drive up for an easy layup, but get fouled by Molly. And it's not going to drop. 
So on the court right now for, for Triton, in addition to Paige Valpone, we've got two sophomores, Molly and Maeve. And then we have the three seniors. No, not quite the three seniors. Who's the? Uh, we've got a uh, junior. Avery Karen, right? Yep, Avery Karen. And then uh, number 13 is uh, Caitlin White. Yes. Also a senior. Yes. Caitlin's put a lot of work into her game. She really is um, probably one of the better all-around players that Triton has. Uh, worked hard this summer, so it'll be fun to watch her. Good box out by Avery. Gets the ball to Maeve. Maeve swings it all the way around to Molly. Molly can hit a three, and she takes it. And that one looked good, but doesn't quite drop. Good hard rebound inside. Maeve comes up with it. Out to Avery. Avery looks to swing. It's going to drive instead. No room inside. She's got to do something with it. She needs some help. Bodies all over the floor. Maeve with it up top. Looking inside to Molly. Molly with a great cut. And she gets fouled on, on the floor. Gets fouled on the floor. She's going to take it out. That's a real nice give and go by Maeve. Uh, those two have been playing together since, <laughs> since I think, in the second grade. And you can see that their chemistry right there worked really well. And, uh, gave Molly an opportunity to drive to the basket. I've always said you can tell a lot about a varsity player by who their eighth grade coach was. <laughs> you know, if they're a good player, if they're a disciplined player, if they, they really know the game, it really usually comes back to that coach in eighth grade. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Uh, I bet you are. Molly gets it in to Caitlin. Caitlin looking for some help. Going to have to drive herself, working inside, and she gets fouled going to the hoop. Well, that, that's, that's great work. That's just determination hustle right there by Caitlin. Uh, she had it tied up a little bit on the outside on the three-point line, got that ball back, and then really drove hard to the basket and got the foul. So I think we've really only seen two two drives to the basket and one shot by Molly from the outside, but otherwise the offense really hasn't had a chance to get into a rhythm uh, in, in the uh, half-court set. Right, and I think they will. Once they start to break that press a little bit more and set up their half-court offense, I think they start to see a rhythm. Um, that was a nice shot by Molly. She just missed, but... Um, she also had, a, I think, an easy layup to the basket there, too, so I think she's got to learn, especially being a left hand up left side, to go ahead and drive it right. and, get, and uh, get, get them in foul trouble. So one and one on the baskets, on the free throws, and Masco driving again. Molly with a little bit of pressure to try and, again, take away some of the shot clock from Masco because they are a really good team. Paige Richardson on the outside. And we had the first sub of the game came in, and I didn't even see it. That's Jamie Karen out there on the floor now as well. Good play inside. Good defense. Great defense all the way around. Tipped, and yeah, it's going to Triton Ball. Fantastic. Yeah, that was a nice defense. Uh, that started with Jamie Karen on the outside. They were a three-point line, not allowing Paige, um, Paige to drive on that. So Maeve Heffernan in trouble and throws the ball away, trying to get it to Jamie Karen. So 7-2 here with uh, five minutes left in the first quarter. And Triton um, really has only had one outside shot and a few chances at the free throw, but the defense has really held up already so far. It's good to see. Yeah, they're playing some really good defense. They've got, um, they've got Masco rattled a little bit themselves. I think that's, uh, that's about the third travel that they've, uh, Masco's had right now, so Triton's doing a good job and not, not allowing them to drive. Right. Oh, jeez, and they got to break this press. The girl just got, Maeve just got run over by number 22. Yeah, I think that. Not called. I Both think the ref might have missed the helmet. Yeah, I think so. And so Triton's just hasn't been able to get the ball across half court against the pressure. And that's the kind of thing you got to say at some point, probably the fifth or sixth possession now. They got to uh, take a timeout, figure it out. Yeah, he yeah. may want it next time if they can't get it out to take yeah. a timeout. Just settle the girls down a little bit. Just calm down. We've had a bunch of bunch of turnovers already. So good good defensive play out there by Triton. 15 seconds left on the clock. Drive. Great block. Excellent block. Molly's going to pull it back up. We're going to go into the half-court set here, and let's see what Triton can run. Out to Maeve on the wing. She's looking around. Comes back to Avery. Swings it out to Jamie instead. Maeve with the drive, and she's That's fouled trying to get her to the basket. And there's a nice give and go again. Uh, Maeve did a nice job of making the quick pass, driving the basket, and uh, getting the contact. It's either the fourth or fifth foul already on Masco. So they're going to be in foul trouble a lot sooner, hopefully, than, than Triton. Ball's all the way out to Maeve up top. Tries to force it inside to Molly. It's not there. Outlet all the way down to Richardson. Richardson with the drive. A great block. But the body as well, and that's going to be a foul on Triton. Yeah, but you know, that's a good foul. That's the kind of foul you want to see. She really, you know, she, it's a little incidental contact, but I think she was aggressive going for the ball. She actually had a clean block at the ball. I think her hip just 
happened to hit uh, Paige a little bit there, but I think that's kind <laughs> of just happened to hit her a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a bit. But a good aggressive foul. So Masco misses the first, and we got a couple subs coming in, including Caitlin Frary, a freshman on this varsity team. Heffernan and uh, Jamie Karen, or uh, Avery Karen taking a break. And Masco misses them both, but gets the rebound over Paige Valpone. And they get a fresh 30 seconds. Back it back out. Swing it around to the right. Bring it back to the center. It's great, great Triton defense. They're really playing well here. Yeah, they're playing disciplined and um, they're holding them around. They're sliding their feet well. And they're not making it easy for Masco at all. Masco's having a hard time just getting the ball inside. And that was almost another travel. Shot clock all the way down to four. She's got to shoot long three, and it's going to be short. And now she's got to move with the ball. Caitlin Ferry, yeah, unfortunately, travel. there is a travel. Yep. That's tough. You get the game. You do great defense. First time you touch the ball, you have one of those sort of well, it, first yeah. game of the season, know. you know, sort of moments. Freshman, that's, I think, a situation where, where um, one of the maybe a sophomore, junior, got to, got to recognize that, come over and help her. So right, she right away. Around. Yep. Right away, yep. So Triton again with a chance to play some good defense. And then she goes around her a bit. Not a foul. Ball went out of bounds, though. Good block by Molly. And on the inbounds, they go outside with it. Long three-pointer. It's going to be short. Another Caitlin Ferry rebound. She's going to bring the ball down the court by herself. And looks to go to... Uh, Jamie Karen, but she's got no room for it. That's got to be a charge. Oh, a there we go. Love it. Love it. Yeah, that's a great play by Caitlin right there. Love it. She uh, got position. She knew she was going to take it. She took it hard, hit the ground hard, but uh, that's how to take one for the team to get that foul. That's fantastic. They got to get that ball in. Into the backboard. Paige Volpone now bringing it over. So pretty much every girl on this team is going to need to play like a point guard from what we can see tonight. And Paige unable to get a, a shot off and set it to jump ball, but it's going to go to Triton. Right. Well, I, li I like what Triton's doing in regards to, to uh, quick quick set pass and the drive to the basket. They're trying to, get, they're trying to get that ball inside and trying to get the layup or draw the foul. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to work for everything tonight. This is not a, a Masco team that's going to give them anything. And there's oh, a good nice shot, right there. almost good, good effort on the offensive boards. And again, tied her up, and it looks like Caitlin White's got the ball under there. And it's going to be a tied up, and that's going to be a Masco ball, though, this time. That's good hustle, though. Caitlin's hustling. Yeah. And now Triton into a full court press, it looks like. And there's a timeout by uh, Dan Boyle. So somehow it's still 7-2. <laughs> I was going to say, we haven't, uh, we haven't had many shots go in. It's been a little, it's been a little sloppy, but, but at the same time, I think there's just been good defense on both sides. So it's yeah. taken, the, uh, taken the rhythm out of the offense on, on both uh, Masco and Triton. So I think uh, as soon as someone can figure out the defense and start hitting some shots, then we'll start seeing some more baskets come in here. Yeah. It was a little stunning. It was it was seven to two at the five minute mark. It really was. And I, I honestly, I stopped looking at the scoreboard, and it felt like Masco has had nothing. It's it's almost like a soccer game where one team has the ball the whole time, and somehow they're not scoring. So I, I, Triton's defense has been impressive. I'll say that. I mean, it has. Early on, it has to hold them the way they've held them, uh, and a lot of turnovers by Masco, um, and and a couple of offensive uh, offensive fouls. I mean, a, a couple of charges. So um, if if Triton can keep this up. Provided they score more than two points over five minutes, or however many minutes these are, so. Right. Well, I mean, they, they, I think they came in um, a significant underdog in regards to yeah. uh, Masco's um, experience and where they've gone before with some of these girls. But I think they're they're holding their own. I think what we've got to do is just settle down on that press. Girls have to come to the ball. Girls have to be, you know, they have to be cut, get open, make quick decisions. Yeah. So Masco's had uh, three points in the lane and two points. Um, Oh, three, three points of free throws, yep. And, and two only baskets. two baskets in the paint. So, yeah, out of those seven, out of those seven points, it really hasn't been uh, – it's not like they're draining threes on Triton no. or anything here. So, again, the defense looks good. Again, Masco forced to take a three-pointer. This one's going to drop. Eventually, they are going to start hitting their threes. So, it looks like Masco's backed up now. They're laying off the press. Caitlin White bring the ball across. Midfield, midfield. That was a court. great and drive. And that's a right beautiful here. play. That was a great drive, lefty. And that's what you got to do. If you see that open, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to take it. 
And they got to get back on defense, and they do. Richardson swings it over to Graves. Graves again with the ball up high. She's the one that just hit that three-pointer. And there's another three-pointer. That one looks good, too. And it does. It drops. And just like that, back-to-back -back threes. And I think they'll and start. Masco lays off of the press, but they're still playing up pretty high on defense. Maeve to Volpone. Volpone looking inside. It's not there. Over to Jamie Karen. Jamie Karen walks with it. Yep. I think you're going to start seeing Masco take more three-point shots to draw the Triton defense out because they know there's nothing down low right now. And yeah. um, Masco is a good outside shooting team. So once they'll start to fall, hoping that they're going to hope Triton goes out, tries to defend them more, and they'll start driving the basket more. And we'll see what Triton does to uh, adjust to that. I know they've got a zone defense they've been practicing. I'm not sure if they want to run a zone if the other team is shooting threes, but it could happen. Good play inside by number three, Graves. Yeah, she's a player. I remember her from last year. She's got a nice outside shot. She hustles. She drives the ball. She's just a well-rounded basketball player. Understands the game well. Senior captain on this team, and they only have two seniors. So they have even fewer seniors in Triton this year, which yeah. is surprising. But they're stacked with juniors, um, and they have their own set of freshmen on the team as well. So she hits the first, and Masco goes up 15-4 to four with a minute 32. And again, I think it was at the five-minute mark when I think they had four fouls, and I expected them being yeah, I trying to be on the line, and it just hasn't happened that way. Good board by Volpone. Yeah, Looks around, finds Maeve. Maeve finds Molly. And they're into their quarter court or half-court set. Back up top to Maeve. Looks inside. It's not there. Looks inside again. Then she's got to swing it to Volpone. Well, Pone's going to drive, and it's going to come off her shin. She's going to lose it in another turnover by Triton. Graves with the ball, swings it out to 23. And underneath, and that's a turnover by Masco. So you said, said, there, was, there, there wasn't a bad drive by Paige. I think she, she, had, she had an opportunity there, but she just lost the dribble on the way out, but it was a good aggressive drive. Yeah. Uh, drive so. I think you said at the beginning of the game that, that Masco is, is a well-coached and disciplined team, and they are typically, but we have seen an awful lot of turnovers. We have. It's been surprising. Yep. But again, first game of the season, opening game, that's going to happen. Caitlin White kicks it out to Volpone. Volpone's going to drive. Nothing there in the lane. Triton really struggling to break some room. Yeah, so we can't um, – the offense that we're running, the girls driving the basket, they have a hard time if she stops her dribble halfway because they collapse quickly yep. on that, and that's when they usually double and triple team you as soon as you stop, pick up your dribble. So we've got to keep that ball moving. And it's got to be that burst of speed. You've got to get the ball and go to Correct. the basket, not, not sort of look at it and decide and then go. So here's the inbound from Molly all the way across to Caitlin. She's going to scoop it up to Freire. And there's no time to shoot. She gets it off just in time. Can't quite fall. 34 seconds left on the, uh, the clock. Was that a foul? I looked away. It was a foul, but it's a nice, nice hustle by Maeve. I think they were going after the, after the ball together. So just 34 seconds left now in this first quarter. 14 to 4. I thought it was 15. That's a nice drive. Get that rebound. Rebound goes to Masco. A lot of bodies flying around down there again, too. Long three by number 23. And that's not going to go. Another fight for another rebound, so they get a fresh shot clock. It doesn't matter, it's off now. Another shot, that one's not going to go. So, so Masco with th three offensive rebounds on that set. So yeah, that was tough. Right now, right now it just seems that they, uh, their legs look fresher and they're just uh, hustling after the ball a little bit more. We're doing a good job, I think, of boxing out, but we're not reacting to the ball once it comes off that rim quick enough. Masco's beat us to the ball. That's maybe one of the hardest things to coach at the beginning of a season is, is how important it is to box out and box out aggressively. Yep. You really don't feel that until you're in, the, in a game, and then you see the difference. Good little move by 23. That one's not going to drop. Never felt like it was. And so we go into the uh, second quarter at 14 to 4. And actually, that's not bad. It, it, it really <laughs> isn't. I think I thought our defense was um, really strong in that first quarter, so I thought it, it set the tempo. Um, I think the offense, you know, Triton is always, um, you know, offense we struggled a little bit last year as well, too. Um, right. You know, we, as you know, we lost some seniors this year, decided to go out and play track. So we've got some younger girls uh, who haven't uh, had the experience. And I think once they get that experience and get that confidence uh, on the offensive side, we'll start right. to see some shots fall. But right. right now I think it's important that they're getting the defense um, structured they look solid underneath the basket they're doing the right things they're where they need to be um, they just got to hustle off those rebounds 
And that's the thing. I mean, you can't, especially early in the season, you can't expect all your shots to fall. You can't expect to be in that offensive rhythm right away. But you can play defense. And Correct. you can play that kind of hustle, get back all the time, fight for every ball kind of defense. And that seems to be what Titans is doing so far. Now the question is what kind of adjustments are they going to be able to make to come out and, and get that ball across half court without any trouble and then get into an offensive set. It's been a little bit of which girl wants to drive to the basket, which is not an offense. I mean, you have right. to, you know, you gotta, you got to create something else. There's been a couple of good give and goes. We can see more of that as well. So in that first quarter, Masco had two three-pointers and four times that went down the lane, or four times, I'm sorry, they were at the free throw line and then two baskets in the paint. Triton got two, two of their points off of free throws and then another basket that was actually in the paint. That was the Caitlin White drive that was really nice. So Paige Levitt out on the floor now, number two, yeah, Paige, also a sophomore. And Paige is a hustler. She's a, she, she, you can see her right there. She's sticking with Caitlin from Masco, and she'll do a good job of staying with her, and she'll hustle. Number 11 makes a great drive, but can't finish, then sticks around and goes for the, goes for the offensive rebound, but commits the foul instead. So that's DePietro on uh, Masco. She started the game. She looks pretty good. Yes. Volpone now bring the ball up court. And again, Masco's dropped off of that press over to Caitlin White. White looks around, comes back into Volpone. That's Volpone, nice that's fantastic. That was a nice give and go. And that's how you aggressive. And then Paige did a great job of just going right up to the basket, being aggressive with it. And usually good things will happen. So I used to say all the time when we were watching the boys' games that I wanted football players out on that basketball court. Well, I think I want, uh, what is it, lacrosse? She's a lacrosse player, yes. right, Paige? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Want more lacrosse players out on that court now. No doubt. So 11 again with a drive, but she carried. There we go. So that's two possessions in a row that uh, Masco has had a little bit of a tough time with it. And you can see what she did. She, she did get uh, Caitlin up in the air on that fake three, so I think they're going to do a lot of pump fakes and drives now. So we've got to be disciplined, make sure we're not jump, leaving our feet and uh, getting the hands up and staying on the ground. Watch that drive. Avery Karen now. Good little drive. She's one of the few juniors on this team. Volpone, she's going to take a shot, and it looks there good. We go. Fantastic, and just like that, it's 14 to 8. Triton comes out with a little bit of a run here to start off the second quarter. Swing to number 11, she did exactly what you said. That was about the, again, I think it's the fourth or fifth travel on Masco, and, and what Paige did on that last possession of that is that she saw the opening, she took the shot, didn't hesitate. I think that's what you right. got to do with Triton. Right. You know, with Triton. If you have the open shot, have the confidence to take it. If it doesn't fall, they'll start falling. But if you look to pass too much, uh, we're going to pass up opportunities, obviously, no pun intended, to, to get the basket. <laughs> it's hard not to do that, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Welcome to this. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Avery Karen drives, dishes it back to Caitlin White. Caitlin with a three, and that looked good, but doesn't quite go. Good fight underneath for the ball, and there's Paige Levitt tying yeah. it up. That's why she's on the court. Oh, exactly. That's what Paige gives you. You know, Paige gives you that hustle, that, that, that ter determination, and the physicality. And, uh, you know, she's going she's to give you 110% every time up the court. Yep. She just stole the possession from Masco. Should have been their rebound instead. Triton's got the ball again. Caitlin Furry trying to drive, loses the handle on it. Good for her, though, just taking the ball right down the lane. I, it is. You know, she, she'll learn. She, she's a freshman. She can tell she's a little nervous out there, but I, I like the uh, I like it that she's being aggressive. So Triton's defense looking good still. Shot clock's all the way down to 15 now, and they're going to take a long three, and that's going to be short. But Masco just hustling after that ball a little bit more on the offensive rebounds. Good drive. Doesn't quite go. Paige Valpone gets the rebound. It's going to drive down the court. She's got a little bit of help with her. Caitlin White trailing. She's going to look around. She's going to try and find, I'm sorry, she's going to try and find Caitlin White on the inside. It was Ferry that was trailing. Good idea. Pass it a little too inside. Masco's able to steal it. Masco swinging it around again, looking inside number 22. Caroline McSweeney on the court now for Masco. She's tall. I'm surprised they haven't gone inside to her more often, but there's a foul on, looks like it was on Avery. Avery. Here. Yeah, you know what? Again, I have to say another good foul by Avery. She was in control. I think she, she did get ball, a little, little body contact. I think, um, I think Paige Richardson might have flopped a little bit on that one and drew the foul, <laughs> but um, which is smart play by her. She's a heads up, heads up ball player, but I, I like Avery's defense right now. She's being aggressive and she's making good ball contact on those on those attempted blocks. That's good. But Avery comes out of the game along with Caitlin White. Mae back in. Molly in. Paige Levitt still on the floor. Volpone and Freire. And she hits them both. And Molly's got the ball now. Here comes the pressure again. 
Just the one girl, just to make Molly take her time coming across half court. Spins and turns. Ball Pone with the ball now. She needs some help. She's going to drive. We look inside. There's Maeve. Good steal, though, by number two from Masco. It's a good cut, but a good steal. And there's another three pointer in and out and over the back. Over the back. That's a good call. That's a good call. So Richardson, I don't know if that's her first foul. Oh, one on one. Here we go. All right. So, so finally, yeah. So finally, those early fouls are starting to pay off now. So it's exactly what we need. Stop the clock here for a little bit and get to the foul line. The second foul on Richardson with five minutes left here in this quarter. So five minutes left, and uh, they're in the uh, they're in the penalty. Here's where we need to be aggressive and drive to the basket, try to draw some of those fouls, get to the line, try to chip away at this lead. So Freire misses the front end of the one on one. Triton's got to drop back on defense. Richardson almost loses the handle on that. Good little effort inside. That's a nice job Great by Molly. Great defense by Molly on that. Just kept her body strong yep. on her. Didn't let her have a clean shot. Now she's got the ball. Chance to bring Triton down. Do something on the half court set. Looking for a screen. It's not there. Looking to go inside to Volpone. It's not there. Paige Levitt. Bring the ball around. A lot of aggressive defense by Masco. It's a physical game out yeah, there right they're, now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in the zone, but they're coming out to challenge those Triton players around the three-point line. So as soon as they get the ball, they're coming up and challenging. And it's smart. If you're a fast enough and a physical enough team to play outside the three-point line, it's a smart way to play. Absolutely. I think we just have uh, Ava Ford came in and sub in for uh, for Caitlin, so we've got Ava out there for the first time tonight as well. She's a, she's a rather senior than Trey. This is a senior who sat in that chair that you're in, Steve, more than a few times last year calling games, which is fantastic. Nice, nice, nice. Excellent. Oh, oh. They were going to call it a travel. They changed their mind on the block. They're going to call it a, uh, a tie-up and a, a jump ball, which they just get possession here in this league. So Masco with the ball out of bounds. 22 coming inside. That's nice great little. defense by Molly. She's having a good defensive game, no doubt. Yep, she read that. She read that flashing down of the ball, and she just got to the spot quicker than Masco and was able to knock it out. And we know the way she is as a player. If she can hit one or two shots, that just makes a big difference on yep. how she plays. No doubt. Great Ava Ford, Ava. Great, rebound. great rebound. Possibly the smallest player out there, and she's got a rebound. Maeve looking to drive. Going to go strong. Going to get her Maybe. chance to go to the line. Excellent. Maybe. And that's, that's one of Maeve's strengths. You know, she's one of the taller girls out there, but, you know, from a young age, she's always learned how to dribble well. And she, you've got that versatility. When she brings the ball up, you don't think that she's going to drive to the basket. And then all of a sudden, you take your eye off her, and there she goes. She's driving. So that, that's a great job by Maeve. And, Great way to use her skill set. And again, when it comes to free throws, we're going to look back on her eighth grade coach as well, see how she does here. She misses the first, shooting two. Because she listened to her dad, not her other coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes. Maeve's got some good, uh, good form, nice, nice backward rotation on the ball. She shoots the ball really well. There we go. Oh. A little bit of nerves, and she misses both. That's all right. It was a good drive, and let's see more of that. Absolutely, yes. So Masco has been holding only four points in this entire quarter. We came, no, two points in this quarter. Came in at 14 to four. Great, great steal by Molly, by Molly, but she's in trouble right away. Manages to get rid of the ball to Volpone. Volpone's bringing it down uncontested until she finally gets just past midcourt. Ava Ford now looking inside. Not there, swings it over to Maeve. Maeve out to Molly. Looking around, looking around. This offense has got to move a little bit more. Yeah, we have to be careful. We're not, we have to be careful. We're not picking up our dribble too early because they're right on top if you pick up your dribble. Ball's going to go out of bounds on Masco with six seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, that's the problem. If you pick up your dribble and your teammate hasn't cut, you're in trouble. Yeah, Masco is coming right out and challenge. As soon as you, as soon as you pick up your dribble, that defender's coming right out to challenge you. Right. So you've got to really try to keep that keep that dribble going. Make sure your your um, your offensive partner has really kind of made the cut or come to you before you pick up that dribble and make the pass. Right. But if I if I if I remember the so so the Masco is two two and one on points in the paint. Oh, all the points have been on the free throw uh, yeah. Right, yeah, they only have two points yeah. in this entire quarter. No, I think we've we're, we've done a great job defensively, not not only just holding our ground, but we're, we've been um, anticipating the pass well. We've got a couple of good steals, knocked the ball out a couple of times. So I think they're starting to figure out Masco's offense, starting to beat them to the spot. Now if we could just start hitting some shots and. We still got three minutes. Three minutes here for aggressive. Go to the line a lot here. We can uh, even close this, close this lead down. Hopefully to 
Yeah, get, three it, or four get it all the way down to three or four would be great. So the last couple minutes of the first quarter is where Masco started to light it up a little bit. Right. Um, they hit a couple back-to-back -back threes. Um, so Paige Valpone tonight, though, already with a basket in the paint um, and one basket out of the paint. <laughs> so Eric Gundrum, our stats guy, as usual tonight, with his, uh, his magic board letting us know what's going on. So Triton with the ball, six seconds on the shot clock, three minute and 17 mark in the half. Ava to Volpone, Volpone oh, inside nice play right and it doesn't oh. drop. It's tough. Oh, it's a Great play. play. Great opportunity. Just doesn't fall. And then it's going to be almost uncontested inside, unfortunately, on the other end. But that was uh, going to give Coach credit on that one. That was a well-designed play. Got the timeout. Good. And um, heck of a job. Just didn't fall for it. Yep. First game of the season. Absolutely. That's what's going to happen. Not every one of your shots is going to fall, even the good ones. So Volpone came up a little bit. A little bit hurt on that last uh, exchange inside. She, she, looks has, fine. she looks fine now, but she definitely plays a very physical game. She does. And she's down and she's hurt. And that's not good because she looks. Unfortunately, um, Paige played volleyball this year as well. And she, she, I know she hurt her knee during the volleyball season. Mm -hmm. So she missed some time, a few games, and then she had a brace. And she doesn't have the brace on tonight. So I'm just hoping it's, it's not the knee again. Then hopefully mm -hmm. it's just something else she might have just worked a little bit and she'll yeah. be right back out there. So she's a senior committed to uh, UVA Wise to play um, to play lacrosse. Yes, she's a good um, athlete, did a heck of a job in the volleyball as well, and um, three uh, three uh, sport uh, yeah. athlete for quite some time here at Triton, so, so it'll be a big loss after this year, but I'm happy for her. She deserves no, fantastic hit. her uh, scholarship for sure. Fantastic hit. Now, you, do you know where UVA Wise is? If you go to the last part of Virginia you could possibly ever go to and then go a little bit further. That's where it is. Oh, it's, in the, it's, <laughs> it's at the end of the world of Virginia. It's a long way. It's a 13-hour drive from here if you want to actually try and make it by car. So, um, yeah, but good for her. And actually, she's one of a few seniors this year that have already committed to a couple different, you know, to, to their schools to play the different sports. So it's kind of fantastic. Right. Um, Triton's had a good track record in recent years of, of getting kids into um, D2 and D3 programs yeah they do you know and it's, it's i think it's important to see uh, uh good kids good athletes get opportunity to play on uh, um, when they get to college but necessarily have to go to a private school sometimes to get that opportunity which is nice no no definitely get it here so Paige Valpone has four out of the eight triton points tonight so her coming off the way she is now is going to be tough for triton tough for her and tough for this team yeah she's not putting any weight on that left side i think that is the knee that she hurt during volleyball mm -hmm. so i'm hoping i'm hoping it's just Maybe tweak just tweak a little up, bit, yeah. maybe just uh, inflame a little bit. Hopefully, nothing yep. serious. Good, strong player. Can see her mother actually is sitting here tonight. I can see her over there. She was a uh, starting point guard here at Triton as a basketball player. Yes, and I guess I guess she's uh, she involved coaching field hockey as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, she also refs. I think she's a yeah. referee for for field, field hockey, hockey as yeah. well. Yep. So Triton now with the ball, 238, 239 mark. Still a 10-point game here, 18 to 8. Ball comes into Avery Karen, goes back inside to Molly, and there's a foul on number three, and Molly's going nice. to go to the line. Beautiful. That's what you need to Shooting do. A one and one. All right. We got two and a half minutes left. They're in. They're in the. They're in the penalty. Let's just be aggressive and get to the line. Good job so far by the refs. I think tonight. I think so. I, I think they've, they've seen they've, most of it. Yep. I think they've called it both ways. Molly misses the first end of the one-on-one, -on -one, so Masco gets the rebound, and they're racing up the floor. I think they're going to try and run the ball as fast as they can now, try and get back into a better offensive rhythm, and there's another three, and that one's going to drop. And this is exactly what happened at the end of the first quarter is Masco hit a couple of threes and went on a run. So 21-8 now, Ava Ford with the ball. Triton's got to respond here. Almost a turnover. A little bit of miscommunication there between Ford and Heffernan. Heffernan now with the ball, tries to make a move, has to go back out to Karen. And there's almost a steal, but Avery Karen going to swing it around. Paige Valpone with a chance to shoot inside. Good effort on uh, Triton's part. And unfortunately, Masco with a breakaway, and that's going to drop. So five quick points on the board for Masco, and Triton's got to recover here before this quarter, before this half ends. Right, and that's what that's what Masco will do with you. If they're quick, if they, if you make a mistake, and they get a rebound, they're going to be off and running. You got to get back on defense. That's right, a good no call right there. A lot of bodies falling all over the floor. Molly tries to go inside. Can't quite get it, and that's got to be a foul. White five with the push. No, white one. I don't know who with the push. Might have been on Molly. 
I think it might have been on Molly as well. Yeah. So a little bit of a run there. So we just went from 18 to we just went from six, eight to 16 to all of a sudden it's a 23. Yeah, Triton yeah. has had only a couple real good chances with the ball. Yeah, unfortunately, Masco again they'll make you pay if you get a little sloppy and they they get out they run the fast break quickly and they finish strong and that's what happened on that last fast break. I think on our offense, we get our passing's not too crisp, so we've got to get the, we got to swing that ball with crisp passes and look for the open shot. So swings it down out to Ferry. Ferry loses the handle on it. A lot of, a lot of fighting underneath for that ball. Ava Ford with pressure. Masco bringing it all the way down. They had a girl wide open underneath. Good recovery on defense. Masco's going to try and slow it down here for a little bit, or are they going to take that quick three? Nope, going to slow it down. Going to look for that play inside. Not there. Up to the free throw line. And that's way that's over the nice back call. by number 11. That's good positioning by Caitlin. Did a nice job boxing out. Forces to go over her back. Gonna, it's a second foul on number 11. I don't know. We're going to have to talk about foul trouble for uh, for both teams, actually, at the half. Because it seems like it's, it's the same players on the court that are getting called on these fouls. So at least a few of these girls are going to be in two or three fouls. As this, uh, as this half ends. So this is where we've, you know, this is a little bit of Achilles heel last year as well too. We've got to hit our free throws. Um, when you're a team that you know, really has to work hard to get every point. When you do have an opportunity to go to the line, we've got to make a pen out. Yep. So Caitlin White gets the first end of the one-on-one. -on -one. And actually, I think that's the first time tonight that they've had the first of a one-on-one. -on -one. I think so. That one bounces out. That's but cool. Ava Ford with the rebound. Maeve Heffernan inside. And she's fouled. She's going to go back to the line. Maeve. Okay, Maeve's really having a great game tonight. She's being aggressive. She's taking good shots. And um, she's playing under control. She's doing a heck of a job. Also had a really good eighth grade coach. <laughs> That's right. I can run with that we, team oh, all yeah. night. I'm I, just well, telling I, you, by yeah, the way. In fact, yeah. we might run with it all season. <laughs> and Maeve makes yeah. the first. Sweet. Maybe his older brother in the house now. Also played troop hoops here at Triton. Yep, there they are. And she misses the second one. And Masco looks to go all the way down the court on a fast break. Really good pass there by number 12. And then oh, a great defensive play underneath to get the strip by Ava. That's a great job by Ava still. Ford. Oh, that's a and she almost gets knocked over. Ball goes out. And they're going to call a Triton ball. That's that's great hustle by Ava to get back on that. It looks like Masco was going to have an uncontested breakaway there. And Triton did a great job to get back. Less than a minute now. Maeve brings the ball down. Looks inside to Avery, who looks oh, inside to Maeve. And Maeve has another chance. Doesn't quite go. She's going to see those in her dreams, all those shots that have been inside. It's going to be tough. Great defense, and the ball doesn't go. Good play by, uh, good heads up play there by, uh, is that Frary? Number three? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it was Kate McCurry. Good heads-up foul, good heads-up defense. I liked it. And that's no only yep. her first foul of the night, so getting some good quality minutes out of the freshman. No doubt. And so the good news is Paige Wallpone is on the bench with her shoes off, but it's her ankle, not her knee. Not her knee, so that's actually a really good sign. If there is such a good thing as... Yeah, provide. <laughs> At least it's not the knee again, provided it's right. a mild ankle sprain. Hope before. She looks like she's smiling. She's a good, good spirit, so I don't think it's too serious. So Richardson hits, and now we've got 40 seconds left to play in this half. Ava Ford bringing the ball across half court. Swings it to Caitlin White. It drives the lane. Does a little Euro step. Doesn't quite work. Ball won't fall. Masco's got it again. A lot of crazy defense by Triton. She's got help inside, but no, she traveled. That was good defense. Uh, just got a bad break there in the travel. Again, early season, we're gonna, not going to see that. Okay. Midway through the season, those kind of mistakes are going to be gone. 21 seconds, Masco definitely set up for the last shot. Let's hope they can try and just make it difficult. We get the rebound. Richardson with the ball now. She's going to wait and take the last shot, I'm going to guess, if she can get to it. She's going to kick it out to 15. Not a lot of time. Two seconds that's on the clock. Right she's there. got no time. 54, but that shot's no good. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Great defense, and that's a good way to end. I mean, I know they're down by 15, but. You know, you end the quarter, you end the half with that kind of defensive play. I mean, that's encouraging. I agree. I think the fact that they've been able to feed off their defense the whole game. So they've been strong defensively. I think they're hustling. 
Um, we've had some good shots. They're, they're, they're not falling. Yeah. And that's going to happen, but you just got to keep going for it. Those shots will eventually fall. But I think they have to be happy uh, only being down 15. And the fact that uh, they've come out and played some real solid defense, I think it's taken Masco out of their game a little bit. So that's all yeah, you can definitely, ask for. It definitely has. I mean, I think, you know, we, we expected a, a high-scoring Masco team. We expected a disciplined Masco team. And I know it's the first game of the season, so we're going to see turnovers. But I think a lot of those turnovers have been caused by Triton's, Triton's defense. Absolutely. It's been solid. I think they might have been called for four or five travels. And, right. you know, usually it's it's because your defense is solid, you're you're filling the lanes, and you're making it difficult them to drive. And um, travels usually happen because of good defense, and I think Triton had some really great defense. Yeah, so it should be a good team. I mean, I'm looking forward to the season because they do, you know, like you mentioned at the beginning, there are a few seniors that didn't come back, went out for uh, track instead, indoor yep. track. Um, and so they miss that kind of, they miss that experience and they miss that leadership. But the girls that they've got that are that are on the court are, I mean, they're, they're solid basketball players all Absolutely. the way around. I mean, we know a bunch of them from having coached them for years Correct. and having seen them so many years. Um, so I think, you know, the challenge is going to be, and what's really been encouraging to see tonight is that there's pretty much every girl is bringing the ball up the court. There's, no not, there's not a, um, you know, once they got over that pressure, and, I, you know, we'll talk about in a minute what, what adjustments they're going to make at the half, but, once they got over the pressure and they started bringing the ball up consistently, then they weren't looking to one girl to bring it up, and they, they did seem to be in an offensive set that was pretty flexible. So hopefully they can continue to do that and continue to have that kind of offense where anybody can bring the ball up and they can just get into their half-court set. Right. I agree, and I think once they got once they got the rhythm, they drove to the basket, and then once they started driving the basket, they had some open shots on the outside as well. I think the girls just have to stay confident, and if the shot's there, don't be afraid to take it. Yeah. Don't pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah, like Paige did on the one, just sort of the 12 footer there. Right. So when they come out in the second half, I would fully expect Masco to be back into that. I would think so. Press. I would yes. think so. I think they're going to try to be aggressive out of the gates again, <clears throat> put the hammer down. But I think try and be ready for it this time again. I think if we just come to the ball, communicate, uh, it, it's, it should be a uh, it should be a pretty easy press to break. And I think one of the challenges too is when 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 the other team is pressing and you're, you're running your press break, and it's not working. The real challenge is to be able to, to, to switch quick enough to right. say, okay, we need another one. we got to go with another another kind of press break because this one isn't working. For whatever reason, whether it's just the scheme doesn't work or the girls aren't coming to the ball, if it's not working, you got to move away from it pretty quickly. Right. Um, I think what we need to do also on the, uh, the defensive end, we did a great job of blocking out. Now we just got to make sure that once we have that block out, we're, you know, we're identifying the ball where it's going off the rim and just try to yeah. beat Trike. Trike, try, which is, uh, Masco is beating us to the ball off the rim. Great job of boxing out. Now we just need to make sure we identify that ball off the rim, go get it, and then uh, hopefully start our fast break or just get the ball to the open person. And again, I think that I think a lot of the boxing out and the rebounding comes with game speed, which you simply don't get until you've you've had a game or two or three under your belt. And you realize, okay, it's going to be that fast. It's going to be that physical. It's going to move at that pace. And uh, like I said early on, you know that that Sunday practice is, is one of the most important practices of the season. No doubt. You know when you've had that first time to get out there and play at game speed and know what works and what doesn't, right. and what feels right and what doesn't. So I mean, I know we know from years and years of coaching that that first practice after that first game is is really critical. So um, and they haven't had a lot of practices. That's another important thing to see tonight um, because of the snow and the, right. and they the lost delays and everything. Four or five days out of that, I guess. Right. And um, and so they, you know, it, I think one thing we're seeing a lot of. A lot of the girls that are out there have played enough together to know each other well, um, but it's gonna ha it's gonna get better as the season goes on. Yeah. Um, I know at least a, a couple of these girls played varsity last year, but but not all of them. I mean, no, and I and I think I think if I'm coach, boy, I gotta be happy in regards to the the mix of the experiences out there. You know, you've, you've got Caitlin who really is just kind of uh, steady, does everything really well. You've got Paige, same thing, hustles, and I think Paige is uh, kind of the emotional leader out there as well. But right. you've gotta be happy on what. Uh, the sophomores did, Maeve and Molly and the freshmen and, and uh, the juniors in regards to just how they fit in with the offense, what they were doing out there. It didn't look like they were overwhelmed at all. So I think a lot to build off of yep. for the second half and certainly for the future here for Triton. So it's great great to see. Yeah, and it was good You know, it was good to see Paige Levitt, too, make that a couple of Absolutely. plays. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, when you said she's out there because that's the kind of, um, you know, that's the kind of aggressive play that she gives you at, at the uh, – at the start, that's what you know. You gotta love. So um, we're gonna do a, a quick halftime interview here. We have uh, our athletic director here at Triton, uh, Tim Alberts, with us, and uh, we'll get him under the mic and uh, get his views on how this game is going. And, uh, and I guess an important thing to ask: if, Can you hear us good now? 
Excellent. So important thing to ask as soon as we get your mic up so we can hear you is whether or not you have a uh, an update on the boys game. How are they doing tonight? I don't have an update. I apologize. No update That's yet on the boys. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Just on this game, I haven't even looked at Twitter or social media. So. That's actually kind of encouraging <laughs> to hear. So, so what did you see that you liked? Uh, you know, certainly a real tough start right off the bat, uh, coming off uh, you know a short practice season and dealing with a Masco press right off the bat is a tough way to start a season. But the girls hung in there and regrouped, and uh, you know they've been very positive in practices uh, that I've seen, and you know made some adjustments, and uh, you know they're right in the game, which is good to see. Excellent. Yeah, what we noticed right off the bat, I think, the, um, is the Triton defense. I thought the girls did a great job being in the right position, boxing it out, challenging Masco. made it very difficult for them to hit their shots and also to get second chances. So I think that uh, the defense really kind of kept them in this this uh, first half, and we expect to see a lot of the same second half of that defense. Absolutely. Just doing the proper box outs, getting every rebound. Uh, you know, they're certainly uh, going all out, so uh, optimistic for a good second half. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So I know tonight, so we got opening night tonight for basketball, boys yes. and girls. Yes. Is this a basically opening weekend for, for winter sports? It is, yeah. Actually, uh, track started on Wednesday night okay. at the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston, and both the boys and the girls won. So good, uh, awesome. good start to the winter start. season. Great. Excellent. Uh, tonight is the first, uh, actually yesterday was the first day you could have uh, hockey and basketball games, mm -hmm. and, uh, the second Thursday of the year, uh, but most uh, league start tonight so nice and is the hockey team playing tonight they are right hockey is tomorrow but tomorrow uh, right. versus linfield okay at noon, away. at noon away noon, yep. away. noon away okay uh, tomorrow we have a big wrestling uh, tournament uh, so i'll be here for that uh, that's a lot of fun starting at 9 a.m oh you got a busy you got yourself a busy week <laughs> absolutely yeah so <laughs> It's a great, such a great time of year. So, so I'm glad you brought up wrestling because I know there's a kid that's uh, going for a record in terms of number of wins at Triton yes, lifetime. Yes, yes, so. Mr. Ostrander's uh, yeah. approaching 200. So, uh, uh, you know, just a tremendous hard worker, uh, and it's uh, awesome to watch him. Uh, great with the kids too. Uh, I brought my, I have two twin boys that are nine years old, so we caught their scrimmage last week uh, in Reading, and uh, you know. Couldn't have been nicer to my boys, and they thought the world of them, you know, are they, champion uh, talking to him. Are they so. getting the uh, wrestling niche? Are they they, they are, yeah. They do uh, youth wrestling. So, oh, that's great. Uh, that's you know, it's a lot of fun. So they'll be up here tomorrow. They're looking forward to spending the day up here. To coming up here, and, you know, they asked if they could go on the maps, and I said, you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been wrestling as, as a varsity wrestler since seventh grade. Right, right. Which, yeah. To me, it's, we were talking about this before during the game, it's just so encouraging that the there are kids here at Triton. You don't need to go to a, a prep school to get a really solid athletic experience, you know, and really sort of – I'm sure the kid's already got scholarship offers and maybe he's already committed somewhere. But it, it's just such a – it's become such a great program, the wrestling program in particular, but I think Triton sports all the way around. Absolutely. You know, uh, it's an awesome school, great community, great facilities. Uh, you know, there's no reason to leave, and I hope everyone stays and, you know. Yeah. If you want to go the college route, that's there uh, down the road. And I think everyone's excited, too, about the uh, the boys' team this year. I think, you know, they've got a lot of, a lot of seniors returning. And a lot of kids that can really shoot and hustle. So uh, I think it's a good chance we uh, we make the tournament this year and hopefully go kind of far. Absolutely. Uh, I hope I get nice. to actually see a game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one new team, I want to give them a shout-out, is we added Winter Cheer. Uh, so they're back in the mix, Excellent. which is awesome. Right. So it's been a couple of years since we've had a winter uh, cheerleading team. Uh, the coach Nadine Hollihan and, and the team had a great fall season, and uh, we added it uh, for the winter time. So did, we, did we get most of the girls come back? We did. That? That's, yep. that's great. Yep, just about everyone. So we have 13 girls. Triton has always had, uh, you know, I think great cheerleaders and always supported the teams. And uh, you know, my, my son sat through that. I think 0-10 season last year for football. But you know what? Every, <laughs> every game we're at, the cheerleaders no, are there, yeah, just uh, giving it, giving it 110 percent on the right, sideline. So right. it kind of. Kind of made it a nice experience yeah, for everybody. One so. of the young tons, uh, teams on campus, but no I want to give them a shout out. So. <laughs> no doubt. And and hockey, the girls' hockey is the uh, again with the um, is it with Masco? It was and Masco and Amit, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So. All right, we can't talk about that in this game. We can talk about that in another <laughs> game, but uh, don't yeah. want to bring them up again. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and, and overall, the the fall season was a really good season. I think. Yeah. I mean, no, it was. Yeah. We had a uh, great uh, great students, uh, good success, and. A lot of good things out in the community, most importantly. So, how's your how's your experience been here? Great. So far? No, I couldn't be happier. No, it's an awesome. Uh, students are great. Good coaches. Um, 
great administration. So yeah, well, I mean, I just from our, from our own experience having kids here, uh, you know, my son everyone said that you've been great and just reaching out and, okay. and uh, being uh, being open and helping helping everyone out. So we really appreciate this. No, my pleasure. No, I love uh, I love what I do. So it's easy. Yeah, <laughs> great. great. Yeah, been very good positive feedback. So now the good. now now the pressure is on. You know, you're I know. Gonna, yeah. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> so Triton's going to start with the ball on inbound here. Well, I thank you for the opportunity. I might jump off. but right. uh, It's up to you. Stay and yeah. enjoy it or uh, or go back down. It's up to you. So Maeve with the ball on the wing, looks inside. Yeah. Can't thank quite you. make that pass to Caitlin. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, thank you. And Masco with the ball. Quick outlet number 11. Gets it up and under, but it won't go. Good board underneath by, uh, is that Richardson again? Yep. Yep. But she gives it up. Freire to Maeve. Maeve, steal by number three. Ball's out up top now. And there's a shot by Masco. So they've had two shots already, and there's a foul on Maeve. Good play underneath. And again, Masco with uh, at least three offensive rebounds in the first 30 seconds of the, the second half. Yeah, so I think they're starting to, they want to set the tone early right there. I think they want to try to get out, get their legs going, moving, try to just out hustle us right now. So hopefully we'll just get settled in. And the first shot goes for Richardson. And I'm guessing that she's going to be the lead scorer for. Uh, for Masco in this game. We'll find out soon enough from uh, our stats guy, Eric Gundrum. But she makes the first of her three throws to take that to lead to 16. And she misses the second. Long rebound comes out to number 11. Pressure's on her. Paige Levitt there playing against number three. They're going to swing it out to 11 again. 11 to try and come inside. Good double team, but she's going to get off a shot. It's not going to go. And Avery Caring gets out muscled for the rebound. Maeve picks it up underneath. A little bit of pressure on her, but not much. She's going to bring it across. Look for some help now. Looking inside, so, so nothing come there. Door, that's it. Yeah. Page Levin unfortunately doesn't get there in time. Number eleven, and that's a carry. Uh, that, yep. That's a carry. Double drill. Yep. So that was a great, great job. But but Page <coughs> Page mistake there was she she came to the ball, but then she stopped. She had to keep right. coming until she gets the pass right. So right. and that's just part of learning the game, especially at the varsity level. You know, a lot of these girls played JV last year, and, and the, the speed is a lot different when you're playing up above RC, yeah, as we it's know. Game speed is totally different at this level, yep. And then again, we're picking up the dribble is going to hurt us if we keep doing that. Correct. Maybe the ball up top, looking to drive, not there. She's got to find somebody to go to. That's it. And that's a walk, too. So back-to-back -back turnovers by Masco and Triton, and only two points on the board so far in this uh in the south for either team. So I think, coach, uh, I think coach wanted us to press right there, and I think the girls kind of might have, might have forgot they got back on D. And <laughs> they're a little bit rattled right now, but they'll get, they'll get back into it. So 16-point lead now for Masco as this second half gets going. You can see if Triton's defense is going to be as good in this half as they were in the first. Oh, that's great D right there by Maeve. Steal. She's got to help behind her if she needs it. She's going to look to drive. She's going to go all the way up and have it stolen by number 11, who's having a funny kind of game. Yeah, she got quick hands. That was a really nice job by Maeve in regards to stealing the ball and dribbling up. She's nice play by number 11. Foul by Paige Levitt there on the shot. So again, the game is just not, it's moving at a faster speed than the Triton girls are ready for right now. I agree. I don't think we've had a shot or a possession in this, really a solid possession in this half. So talk about the lead scores as number 11 misses her first. What is number 11's name? It's DiPietro. So for Masco, Graves with eight, Richardson with seven, DiPietro with two, Monaco with five, and Fillmore with two. And on Triton, Maeve Heffernan with one, and Rob, uh, Robin, Robin Volpone's the mom. Paige Volpone with five, and Caitlin White with three, and that will make up uh, eight out of the ten that we had. Right. And that was the first half. A bad turnover there by Triton a little bit. Got a little sloppy with the pass. We're going to settle down here a little bit. So full court pressure by Triton, nice and it works right, right away there. by Freire. Gets the steal, but gives it back up. And then Triton girls run into each other. Richardson with a great pass down low. And just like that, Masco gets another basket on the board. And here comes Caitlin White with the ball. And I like that. I like that all go. the way around. Absolutely. There's a three. I like it. Beautiful. I like Caitlin White bringing the ball up, not worrying, not looking around, just going right up the court, setting herself up for where she wants that ball for a three and taking it. Again, you know, she's, she's, again, she's, she's probably got the, the, the nice shot from the outside. I think if, she, if it's there, she's got to take it. She's got to be aggressive and take that shot. Right. So a chaotic start to what really was. the third quarter here. <laughs> I, think we, I think we knew that. I think Masco was going to come out press. Yeah. I think they were going to try to fast break. That's what they did. Uh, took us out of our rhythm real quick, but uh, I think that three-point shot will help settle them down. 
And I think a bunch of the turnovers by Triton. I mean, there was so Triton puts on the press, gets a steal off the press, but then immediately loses the ball back again when the pressure comes on them. And, and Maeve with that drive, again, the ball got taken away from Warren Steele. I think it's just Triton's just not playing at full speed. Right. And, yeah. it, you know, again, that'll come, but um, it's got to come a lot sooner than uh, than a couple games from now. It's got to come tonight. Yep. So on the court for Triton, Avery Karen, Maeve Heffernan, Paige Freire. Is it Paige Freire? No. Caitlin Freire. Caitlin Freire. Page, uh, Paige, Paige Levitt. Levitt. Caitlin White. And they're going to put the pressure on again. They got a steal here last time. Freire got a steal. Let's see what happens this time. It goes over Levitt, who's right there behind the ball. Can't quite make it. And, uh, oh, great defense. They managed to, to stop the shot from going in. But again, Masco retains possession and takes a three and makes it nice generous bounce no pressure by masco now caitlin white with the ball again gets a little pick from ferry but it's not enough and gonna go all the way out to page with page steps on the line rushing that ball a little bit rushing that pass yeah it looks like masco's coming out to play uh they're not playing man they're playing they're getting the zone but as soon as their pass is made they're coming right out to challenge the person with the ball so they're gonna have to really be smart and protect the ball so Molly Kimball back in the game for Triton. Richardson on Freire bringing it down. Masco goes into their half-court set. A lot of swinging around. A nice another outside shot, and that's another three. Yeah, so it looks like, looks like Masco is going to settle in for those threes if they're there. They're going to take them. Triton's got to find a, a way to adjust for that. Molly's going to take a three. It's going to be a little bit oh, short. Nice Made with a rebound. Yeah. All sorts of banging around. Number 11 is going to get hit in the hip by Caitlin. Was it a reach around? It's hard to tell what happened there. should be a blocking foul. Yeah. He initially called it going Triton's yeah. way, but uh, yeah, we knew what he meant. It's probably the third foul. Yeah, it's the third foul on Caitlin White. Ball comes in. Triton's looking a little a little slower now. They got a, they lost a little bit of their step. I think those three pointers definitely hurt. Number eleven, stutter steps, brings into the lane, too short. Caitlin White with the rebound. Looks to drive and gets fouled that's by number 11. Cameron. That's at least her third, if not fourth. Yeah, Masco's a fast. That's her third. Masco's a fast team. They're smalls. Their point guards can, and their guards in general can move really quickly. So you've got to, you really got to stay, stay on your toes. Trying with the ball and in danger of losing it on a five-second count because nobody was moving when Molly was handed the ball by the ref. And there's a steal. Molly tried to drive and kick it out to Furry. Didn't happen. Richardson drives down, puts in the layup. They got to be quicker. They got to snap that ball a little bit faster. Ferrari now with the ball brings it across half court. Looking around, swings it way out to, to Caitlin. Another three. That looks good. Comes a, nice a little shot. bit short. Nice, nice rebound by Maeve. That's a nice foul. By number 11. No, by number three that time. Graves with the foul. And that was a nice rebound by Maeve. And that's what I talked about earlier. So we've got to identify where that ball's coming off the rim. Maeve did a great job. Grabbed it. And was aggressive and going for the line. And that was the second foul on Graves, who was their leading scorer in the first half. Maeve, one for f one for three, one for four from the three-point line now. I think it's one for four. I think one for four. Her shot looks good. It's good yeah. back rotation. They'll, they'll, yep. they'll, they'll fall. Take Tom Freire out and Jamie Karen in. And that one will bounce as well off the brim and out. So Masco with the ball. 37 to 13 now at the four minute mark. Good little move by Masco up top. Not a great shot. It's not going to go, but a foul underneath and it's going to drop. Not drop, sorry. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then that, and that just uh, another another situation with the ball up in the air and we're just late to turn and identify where that ball is. And Masco yeah. is just waiting for that ball to come off the rim. And Love to know what the Masco coach does to practice that sort of awareness underneath. And that was the fourth foul on. On Maeve. Fourth foul on Maeve, so she's going to come out smiling because she knows she's going to have to get yeah. back in there at some point, but you know, she's got four. So they're all good fouls, good aggressive fouls. Good defense by Triton, and the ball is just bouncing out the wrong way. So it's a combination of not being in the right spot and just some bad bounces that are that are just going mask yeah. its way right now. I agree. A 25-point lead. Swings it out. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Masco really doesn't need to rush this. They're going the lane. I think it's Jamie Karen with the block. Yeah, that was nice defense right there. 
She got by Molly, but Jamie closed the lane, got her hand. The reason why she didn't call a foul there because she, she had her, kept her arms up. A lot of times you keep your arms up, you don't swat the ball. You're going to get the benefit of the doubt with the refs. Right. Again, good defense on Jamie defense, there as well. Yeah. Yep. Jamie Karen looking good right now. Playing well. So Masco, nine seconds on the shot clock. And after not having to rush, now they do. Swings out to three. Richardson, little up fake. Going to drive all the way down and get blocked. Oh. But they're going to call it on Avery Karen. That was a tough one. Yeah, that looked like a pretty good block, I think. thought Jamie did a nice job of keeping her body away, just keeping her arms up. It looked like right. she got ball. She might have got hand. We couldn't see from here, but it looked like she had all ball from there. No, no, we can see everything. We can. <laughs> Wait till they show the replay. Oh, they don't show the replay. There's no jumbo shot here either. It's probably a good thing, though. So one thing I don't see tonight on a Friday night is any students in the student section for Triton, unfortunately. I know it's the first yeah, game of the season. First game of the season. Um, I think they'll get it. I think the boys' basketball probably drew a lot of the uh, kids as well, maybe going down and watching yeah, that game. Go Masco's down to Masco, right. Yeah. So another offensive rebound from Masco, yeah. who's, who's got probably more offensive rebounds and points at this point in the game. Ball kicks out to Richardson. Richardson swings it all the way into the corner. Gets a pick. Takes a shot. That one's not going to go. And that's going to be another offensive rebound and another fresh 30. And that time, Masco dribbles it off her own leg. And so Triton's ball. Masco drops back. Molly's going to take it up the court. So 25 point difference here with two and a half to play in this third quarter. And Avery and Molly just not kind of yeah, coordinating. We're the, yeah, we're the same page there. Seems like we're definitely, we have not been able to get in a rhythm. At no, all this not, on, not on the uh, half court set. No. Definitely not yet. Drive by Masco. Outside. Swinging it around. Looks inside. Jamie Karen with good defense That's and able forward with another rebound. That's at least her second tonight. And that was a great job, Ava. She more. saw the ball go up. She went right after it. That's what we need to see more of. It's a third rebound for tonight, so. Jamie Karen swings it to her sister, who looks back inside to Jamie. Jamie had a chance to turn and shoot, and she's going to. Nice play, and that's going to That was a really nice play. Ah. We're not, it's, it, we're not ah. catching any breaks from the rim, but I like some of the shots we're taking. Oh, that's a deep. break down on there. Stay with it. And that's going to be a foul. Mm, that's tough. That is tough. I think it's a better no call, but what can you do? Yeah. Yeah, Jamie with a good, strong move to the basket, you know? Excellent move. Who was her eighth grade coach? <laughs> Fourth foul now on Caitlin White. So Triton's in a little bit, no, Triton's in a lot of foul trouble. And actually, this is an exact flip-flop from yes. the first half where Masco was in foul trouble early, and instead Triton is one away from right. the, uh, or Masco is one away from the bonus. And they hit another free throw, and it's 40 to 13 now. And then unfortunately, I think those fouls that we had in the first half were good, strong fouls. Some of the fouls we've had this year just been kind of lazy. Yeah. We've been getting late to the spot, making bad contact. So Molly with a good move to Jamie. Jamie's going to bring it around back up top. She's going to look for some help. She's going to swing it back to her sister. Looks inside to Molly. It's going to be tipped off of Masco and Triton Ball. 11 seconds on the clock. I always love to see a clean basket off of an inbound play. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be really nice. <clears throat> good clean pick, good clean move. Molly's got to go somewhere. Goes to Avery up on the wing. She's going to dribble it back around. Not a lot of time on the clock, and unfortunately it's a turnover. It was going to her sister, but her sister couldn't quite handle it. Masco all the way up. That was a walk. Good defense. And a lot of pressure there, and unfortunately very, ooh, and she gets knocked down. Number three on number three. She didn't see it coming. It was a little bit of a blindside ah. hit. Tied up, it's going to be Triton ball. But there was a situation again where we had two Triton girls on that side. The uh, Masco girl never should have gotten to get that rebound, but we're just right. a little slow to react to that ball off the rim. There we go. Masco with a little bit of pressure, not much. Even a Molly. Molly over the half court. Got to move. Not moving. Jamie trying to get inside, and she does. It's going to be tied up again. That's going to be Masco ball, unfortunately. So they're looking, there's some good passes that are going inside. They just got to be a little bit crisper and it's got to be a little more. So Jamie's got to, when she goes in in like that for the ball, she's got to go and get position and like she body does. the girl up and just, you know, yep. I'm here, I want the ball. And if she doesn't get it right away, then get out of the paint. But it can't be sort of go in there and look. Right, it, you know. it seems like we're just kind of we're <laughs> going to the spot. We're not really 
shoot to the spot ag aggressively and just right. getting position. So it, unfortunately, it, it makes it the pass ineffective because, because Masco is able to get to that spot sometimes before we are because they right. can read it. So coming off this timeout, we're going to have, it looks like, uh, Ava, Molly, Jamie, and Avery. And I'm not sure who is number, it's number eight. I think that's. We didn't even have a number eight. Not sure. Number three, I think that's. that's <laughs> oh, number three, the, that's Caitlin Caitlin Prairie. Freshman. All right. But, hey, shout out to number eight, wherever you are. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whoever you are, exactly. Uh yeah, it's only only 11 girls on the uh, on the varsity team this year, so it's it's not a deep bench, which um, on a on a heavy fouling night could could prove to be difficult. Right. I think you see, and you could see where we miss uh, Paige Valpone as well. You know, her, her I think yes. just her senior leadership. Yep. yep. And points going. Yep. So the ball comes in. Ava Honor is going to get it across midcourt. Going to pull it back up and look around. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Richardson's still in this game. Yeah, they're going to take a long three, and that one's not going to go. And ball tipped. That was a good job. That was a good by job by Ava again, identifying where that ball was coming and getting herself in position to get that rebound. Molly Kimball with the ball now. Brings it over half court. And the, the Triton offense is doing a lot of standing around yeah. to the point where Molly ends up getting the ball taken away from her. Avery saves what could have been a turnover. Tries to go inside to Molly, but it's not there. Chaos for Masco trying to get the ball across half court, but they do. Swing it out to the wing, look inside, and a lucky bounce, and it goes right to number 24. Ava Ford again in the right position to come right. up with a rebound. It's unbelievable how many rebounds that girl has tonight. Yes, and one of the shorter girls on the court. So it's good. Yes. It goes to show you it's all about height. It's about determination and, and heads Footwork. up play. Footwork and being in the right spot. Ferry with a long shot. Jamie Karen underneath. It's going to get tied up. It's going to be Triton ball, though. Yep, good hustle by Jamie. See what happens here. Last time they didn't really get off a clean shot. The ball actually went out to, to Avery on the wing. She just had to dribble away with it. <laughs> Five seconds left before the end of the quarter. And Aunt, Aunt Jamie's got to go up, but it was tipped. One second, it's going to be no shot. So we're going to end the third with 40 to 13, a uh, 27 point deficit. We had it all the way down to eight. I think, no, it was six. It was 14 to six at one point, or 14 to eight, eight at one point. Yeah. And since that 14 to eight, unfortunately, Masco has been able to throw up a, an awful lot of points, and Triton has really only gotten five. Yeah, and I think I think we're seeing just a breakdown on defense a little bit, a little bit on the hustle side too as well. Um, girls like they're getting a little frustrated, so I think it's you know it's taken out of the game a little bit. But hopefully this fourth quarter they'll just get back to basics, hustling, good defense. I think right now obviously they're probably not going to come back from this, but you just hope you can just maybe win the quarter or keep it close right. and build right. off that for the for the next game. Win the quarter. Realize, realize. Start to think about the things. Start to learn the things that you're going to need to practice going into the to the to the next practice, the next game. They've got back-to-back -back games. Or not back-to-back, -back, but two games next week, Tuesday night and Thursday night, also at home. So the, there's. Okay. Um, That's great. It is great. I mean, they're starting off the season with a lot of home games, which is which is good. It's a chance for this team to sort of get its legs under itself um, before they have to go somewhere. And then, of course, there's the holiday tournament. I, uh, I can't recall whether it's in Ipswich or Newburyport this year. Um, so we got a couple new players on the court now for Triton. Is that Anna Domingo, number 22? Number 22, Anna Domingo, and number 12. Is that number 12? Yes. Yes. It, no, that is um, 42. No, 42. So Emily Hager. Oh, who's, Emily Hager. Yeah, right. who's done a great job at JV. I'm glad to see her up playing varsity this year. I think she's got, she's got some strength, got some size. I think she can be a force down there. Masco unfortunately comes up with another offensive rebound and almost an yep another one two offensive rebounds from Masco good little pass inside good ball movement right number there. five good, no call two on that and what happened there yeah, oh, how about that shot clock violation shot those, clock shot, those shots are going up and they weren't hitting the rim they were just going off the backboard that's kind of crazy yeah it's almost like they're going for the offensive rebound record right so, and <laughs> you know, we don't want it to hit the rim we just want to be able to call it a rebound right Prairie with the ball uh, and she traveled. And again, it's it's the um, it's the first game of the season. Nerves combined with being down by 27, you know, combined with playing against a really a really solid Masco team, no doubt about it. Defense holding pretty well. And yeah, that was a nice play, nice cut. game there. 
Good move by Masco. Yep. A little pick and roll there by Masco. Uh, Anna with the ball, throws it, it to Freire. Freire to Emily. Emily looks inside to Freire, but Freire can't quite get there. Gets a hip check. Got to get back on defense. Good hustle by Anna. Good hustle, good hustle. Get a hand on that. So it's not the way you draw it up, 13 to 42, but they have had some really good moments in this game. Yeah. So offensive rebounds tonight, 20 by Masco and four, four by Triton. By Triton. Masco just got a nice point off an inbound play there. I think Masco's doing a good job of really setting good picks, good screens, and rolling off them. And it's confusing trying a little bit off that. Emily to, to Anna, but it's another turnover by Triton. Masco with the drive, going all the way down. That's going to be a foul, and it's going to go. It's a foul on Ferry and Richardson, who, for my money, shouldn't be in the game anymore if I was her coach. I mean, I'll go ahead and say that. I mean, not not because she's not good and she's not, you know, having a great game. That may be, but it's a long season. It this is a long season, yeah. This is, you know, game one, and you already seen a Triton girl go off with an injury. I mean, I, yeah, I think I might uh, want to give her a rest as well, yeah. too. And, and there you go. she comes out. All so, right. Yeah. I uh, would be shocked if we saw her come back in the game. But it's our first game of the season, too, so sure. what, do, what do we know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, Ferry bringing the ball up court. The half court. Swings it out to Anna. Anna looks inside to Emily. No, it was clean. Looked like it had hit on the line. Nope. Avery Karen with some good defense. Molly gets got by, nice and there drive. we go. There's another drive in there. Yeah, Michaela Graves. The senior number three point guard. She's uh, she's got a nice game. Quick hands, quick feet, finishes strong. She was their leading scorer after the first half. I'm not sure if that's still true or not. Molly with a good drive, gonna get fouled. That's a nice drive by Molly. She's got she's got to do that. She's got to be more aggressive. She's a uh, you know lefty, and I think she's gonna you know, she's one of the faster girls on Triton. She's got an avenue. She's got oh, yeah. to drive the basket, get herself to the line. And I think I mean I think that's one thing we'll see a lot more with Molly. Um, she's only a sophomore. There are certain, I've seen certain players on Triton, you know, who, who over the years, who they want the ball. When there's pressure, and have, and when, there's a, when there's a press, when there's pressure, they want the ball in their hands. And I think we're going to see that more and more with Molly. That sort of, give me the ball, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make something happen. I agree. You know? Yep, I agree. It'll come. I mean, she's yes. only a sophomore. So. Exactly. Long outlet pass is a little bit too long. Another turnover by Masco. And the... Uh, so it looks like Masco's got some girls in there as well, some of their subs, so hopefully we can get some things going. So Graves has 10 and Richardson has 13 for this game, but Graves is still in there. So maybe we'll see another, as she goes for a turnover, doesn't quite get it. And there's a, oh, it looks like it tipped off of Masco. Yep, it's going to be Triton Ball still. So here's another so chance. So Graves, Graves is playing Molly kind of aggressive right now. Molly's just going to settle down, deep breath, and just got to stay within herself. This is actually a good experience for her playing against one of the better point guards in the league. Yeah. It'll help her develop for sure. And right on cue, Molly has Graves, Graves right on top up, yeah. of her. Yep. She's going to. She looked good. Good little push off in her shot. Drop. Ah. Yep, not bad at all. It's got some separation. Got a shot off. That looked pretty good. Now she's got to stay with her on defense. Just swinging out, Masco looks inside, not there. Number two swings it over to Graves. 23 of the ball, feeds it inside. Good little move. Oh, and Domingo's going to get on the score sheet by uh, getting a foul. Yes. So Triton's foul is already at eight, possibly nine. So it's going to be in the bonus all the way out. All the way out. And amazingly, Masco with only three fouls in this entire half, <laughs> which frequently is a, a when you're not driving to the basket enough. I actually think Triton has been driving a fair amount. They're just they're just not driving. But they're not, in, but they're not, not yeah, they're not finishing up strong, right? You, nope. You've got to. It's, it's one thing to drive, but if you keep the ball low, they're getting the ball swiped out of their hands a lot, and they're not they're not trying to aggressively drive to the rim to hopefully right. force that foul. And just not getting enough possessions either. I don't think we've no. seen enough of the um, the offensive set. So four fouls on the floor right now. Um, Caitlin White and Maeve Heffernan. Caitlin with a nice long three that doesn't quite drop. Can't get there. So Maeve on the floor with four fouls. Caitlin White on the floor with four fouls. 
Might as well get him out there and let him play. Nice move inside. That's just fantastic yeah, footwork. Yeah, this fantastic is good. To see, this is good to see these five out here. Um, this is pretty much your five starters right here. So get them in a rhythm. Maeve but, driving again. Yeah. Maeve going to the line again. Again, that's what Maeve gives you. Even though she's when he affords down, she's getting affords down low. She's got a good first step. She can dribble, so she can give you that option. And they called that on the floor, which is probably probably good, probably accurate. It's going to be a turnover unless Maeve can get there in time. No, 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 it was tipped. So settle it down. You got a new fresh 30. Maeve looks at swinging inside. It's not there. It's not going to take the three. Oh, and it's a miscommunication between Maeve and, uh, and Caitlin Ferry, and that ball is going to go out of bounds for a turnover to Masco. I almost said Pentucket. I'm way ahead of myself. <laughs> First game of the season. Yeah, you know. So it's important here. We got three, about well, four minutes left here with uh, with primarily our starters. So this is good experience for them. Get in a rhythm. Let's play some solid basketball here to close out the quarter. And ignore things like a really beautiful three going in Martin by Mascot. Yeah, you just right. got to just ignore it. Just shake yeah, it off. Exactly. Doesn't matter. We're out here to play our game. Doesn't and matter what they do. You see Malika playing right up on Molly. She's gonna gonna make it hard for every time. Good experience for her. That's a nice try and a give a go. Not sure what happened there. She tried to drive baseline and just Masco tipped it out. So third three-pointer by Michaela Graves. Yeah, she's got a she's really nice having, shot. She's having a good game. Really nice shot. All right, Triton with another inbound play. Let's see what they got here for this one. Can't quite go inside. Going to have to go outside to Maeve. Maeve's going to drive again. Oh, that's a nice play that's by got drop. There we go. There we go. Giddy up. There we go. She's had some really nice drives. Nice to see that fall for. And almost a turnover. It's going to go out of bounds. No, it still stays in bounds. Kind of a crazy play all the way around there. Another long three, and that one's going to be an air ball, but it's another offensive rebound. And no, no, no shot. It's a travel. Travel. By, nice. Travel by Graves. So Triton with the ball, three minutes left in this game, down by a lot, but an opportunity to just make some stuff happen here. Caitlin White looks to take the three, changes her oh, mind. Oh, that's a really nice good pass. Go, and well it's done. Drop. Outstanding. That's well good done. basketball. That is good basketball. Yep. I like it. Nice quick pass to Maeve. Maeve kept the ball low, protected it. Quick bounce pass. Basket and one. Just solid all the way around. And that's the kind of confidence they're going to need. To, if they can play the last three minutes of this game, exactly, that's what play we're strong about. defense, yep. get those kind of plays, they're going to feel good. Ignore the threes that are going to drop. Just ignore them. Yep. And they got to get back. Masco is pushing it. Oh, chance to go underneath. Changes their mind. Graves up top of the ball is going to drive. Euro step. It's not going to fall. Maeve with the rebound looks around for help. It's going to bring it up the court herself. It's actually, I think you're right. It's a good thing that. Um, uh, it's a good thing that Graves has been playing on Molly. It really, she is a Graves is a very good defensive player, and it is forced, is. it's good, it's given Molly a really good experience. No doubt. You know, Molly is a sophomore, a starting point guard. She's going to face some really good point guards here in the um, KPN league. So this is a great experience for her. Beautiful move by Caitlin White, and that ball just won't quite drop, and that's going to be Mays. Nope, it's just going to be out of bounds on uh, on Masco. That's good hustle by Maeve. She's really working hard here. So here's one thing. Triton's got to come off of these inbounds plays a little bit quicker. Yeah. Not yeah, sure what's going on, but it's just taking a long time to make something happen. Maybe with the outside shot. Doesn't quite go. Rebound to Masco. Masco driving. Graves with the ball. Just going to go all the way and then pull it back out. Number two. Long three-pointer is going to drop by number 23. So Crystal Zapage with a uh, deep three this mascot team, but again, ignore the threes, just play your game. Ah, uh, get a oh, that ball. It's on everybody there. Yep. Can't telegraph the pass, and can't telegraph the pass, and you gotta come out to the ball. Yeah, I mean, and then she'll learn on that. Yep. But, uh, Avery was calling for the ball, but she gotta come to it, gotta come to it. Timeout. Good timeout. So, it would've been good to be a little bit more than 17. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they, they missed a lot of free throws. So, they did. Missed free know, throws. And quite, quite, frank, quite frankly, they really had some good quality shots of drives to the basket, too. The ball seemed like a little bit of a lid on the rim for us tonight. So yep. we haven't got many breaks. 
But uh, you got to like what you see as some of the young girls tonight on being aggressive and going to the basket. Yep. So they're that's, hustling, they're playing hard. It's good. It's good. Now, I know, I have to say it, I know that Molly and Mia and Jamie all miss seeing Mia Berendino out there. Oh, that's well. okay. <laughs> She's a volleyball player now. It's fantastic. Yep, yep. She, she misses. She, was, she wanted to actually come up tonight, but she let under the weather. But, uh, yeah, so unfortunately she's focusing on volleyball, and we just couldn't make the double commitment this year. But well, when uh, she is feeling good, we have to get her up here in the booth. Oh, yeah, she that will. would be enormously <laughs> funny to hear what she has to say about her friends and her teammates out there on the floor. I'll talk her to her one of these nights. Maybe maybe, a, maybe a halftime guest. That would be fantastic. <laughs> So we got um, Paige Levitt back on the floor, Jamie Karen, Anna, Emily, and Ava Ford. Paige Levitt with the ball. Looks around again. They got to stop picking up their dribble quite so quick. Jamie with a good little move to the basket. It's going to swing to Ava. Ava's going to shoot, and that's going to oh, drop. Nice shot by she's got a good shot. Yes, she's she does. got a good shot. She's, you know, she's, she's, she's had a heck of a game tonight. 23 uh, for Masco has had a pretty good uh, second half, too. She has. <laughs> At least five points, one of them that deep three, and that good little uh, up fake there to get a clean shot off. Ava to Jamie. Jamie looking inside, nothing there right now. A lot of pressure on her. Double team tries to go to Emily, and it's not going to work. Graves all the way down, little move under the basket. Has to take it back out. 12 seconds, 10 now on the clock for Masco to shoot. 23 launches another three and puts another one down. Yeah, that's right to shoot. They've got a really good form. <laughs> that was a two-pointer, actually. I guess the foot yeah. was online. Two, oh, she had two threes, sorry. She had two threes. All right. She's a sophomore, too. We're going to see a lot of her. She's a good basketball player. Ball goes out on Triton. Going to be basketball with 33 seconds left. So a tough opening night for Triton, but it's, we saw a lot of good stuff. We saw a lot of great defense. I do. I so, think. Yeah, I think some things to build off of here with a with a fairly young team. And we saw a team that's you know that stayed in the game, stayed stayed up up tempo and competitive as long as they could. Agreed. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the score is indicative of uh, how Triton really played. I think they they hustled, played fairly well. Yeah, totally agree. 15 seconds now left in this game. Shot clock at 10. Masco's got to take one more shot before that clock goes off, or just let it go all the way down. Instead, it's going to go out of bounds. So we've been, had help tonight from uh, Maggie, Ella, Kyla, and Tim has been producing it for us. She's been fantastic. Good crew tonight, and I'm so happy. We had four people here, plus Bob. I mean, just it's great being able to do a game like this. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's going to be 1.3 seconds left on the clock. That wasn't the final horn. That was just the, uh, the shot clock. And Triton dribbles it out, and there we go. 63 to 19 as your season opener here at Triton. Two more games at home. Holiday tournament coming up. We saw a lot of good stuff from the uh, from the Triton Vikings. Unfortunately, Paige Valpone out uh, with what looks like an ankle injury. I don't, I don't think it's anything too serious, but I think if coach, you know, I think you 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 don't look at the score and you look at the, some of the pauses you took out tonight. Defense was pretty solid, especially in the first half. I think you saw some nice things. Ava off the bench, I thought, did a great job of positioning Absolutely. well, rebounds, nice shot, good, good heads up, smart decision. Um, I think that, uh, you know, with the young team, I think some good positives and some things to build off of tonight for sure. Yeah, you know, you bring up Ava. I think she had one of the better games out there tonight. I really I mean, do. She, you yep. know, she had that shot at the end, which is, is her shot, no doubt. Um, but she got more rebounds, you know. I mean, she, she was solid all the yeah. way across the, the floor. Um, again, coming off the bench, kind of a six man for the for the Triton Vikings. No that doubt. was good. And I think Maeve, I think uh, Maeve, I think if you're looking at Maeve too, you're gonna have to have a, uh, be really happy with her performance tonight. She did a heck of a job both on defense and offense. Had some really nice drives to the basket. Um, I think uh, I think uh, she'll get more breaks next time. More of those will go in, but you have to be really happy with the, her performance tonight. And I think Molly did a good job. Uh, being a sophomore coming into varsity, starting as a point guard, you're going against one of the better point guards in the KPN league. Um, I think that she handled herself well, and I think that she'll. Uh, this will be a, a good game for her to grow from and, and move forward right. for the future for sure. And it's one of those things. Normally, and, and we talked about Richardson coming out for for Masco, but they left Graves in the whole game. And, it, and I'm sure the coaches didn't talk ahead of time, but it's almost like one of those scrimmages where you say, "Keep your best player out there. I need yes. her playing defense on my player to make my player better." And that's exactly what happened. Agreed. Towards yep. the end of the game, was good. So. Um, just to run down the numbers uh, as we finish off here. So Maeve Heffernan with three points. Um, 
I think that's a defensive rebound and three offensive rebounds. Um, Caitlin White with nine points tonight. She's the uh, yeah, she the high really scorer well. for for uh, Triton. Um, and three defensive rebounds as well. Paige Valpone with five points before she got injured, and then Emma Ford, or uh, sorry, Ava Ford with that two-pointer. Um, you know, with Kate, uh, Caitlin, of course, she's just one of those girls. Is she's not flashy, but she's just fun, fundamentally sound. And just did a lot of great things tonight in regards to staying calm, nice passes, hit some nice open shots. Loved her pullback threes that she was taking. Uh, boxes out well, so you know her uh, her senior leadership and skill ability really helped keep Triton in it there early on. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good season. I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you, Steve. My a lot pleasure. Of fun Thanks to get for this thing me. going, man. This is, yeah. this is fantastic. And, this, you know, as much as I might like calling football and <laughs> softball, whatever, and hockey was fun, but, man, nothing better than basketball. So well, it is, it is a pleasure, it is a pleasure being here with the uh, the voice of the Triton Vikings. <laughs> I can't no doubt about it. All right. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you for the next game.